Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Suspense. The adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Dragnet. And now, Gangbusters. Welcome to the Film Detective Podcast, where we bring you theater of the mind programming from the golden age of radio. I'm your host, Carl Amari. This time, it's a 1943 radio comedy episode of The Great Gildersleeve, starring Hal Perry. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hollywood's Golden Age, where Betty Davis, Jimmy Stewart, and Cary Grant ruled the screen. That's what I said the whole front page out. I never mind the European war. We got something a whole lot bigger than that. From silence to the 60s, we're bringing you a new way to enjoy old favorites. Ah, there you are. It's all classics, and it's all right here on The Film Detective. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, played by Hal Perry, was a pompous windbag who first appeared as Fibber's next-door neighbor on the Fibber, McGee, and Molly radio series. Fibber and Gildersleeve's verbal and physical tussles gave rise to one of radio's immortal catchphrases. You're a hard man, McGee. From 1939 to 1941, Perry perfected Gildersleeve's trademark snide laugh, and Don Quinn, co-creator of Fibber, McGee, and Molly, knew that radio's first spin-off was around the corner. In 1941, under the sponsorship of Kraft Foods, The Great Gildersleeve premiered becoming a joyful occasion for radio listeners who could never get enough of him on Faber, McGee, and Molly. In the opening broadcast, Gildersleep moved from the town of Wistful Vista to his new home in Summerfield. Soon after, he became the town's water commissioner and set about to raising his orphaned niece and nephew. The small town personalities who peopled Gildersleep's world were artfully tailored for comedy effect. Walter Tetley was the impish, bright-voiced nephew Leroy. Louise Erickson was the adolescent niece Marjorie. Lillian Randolph, the bedeviled maid Bertie. Richard Legrand played Peavy, the sardonic druggist. And Earl Ross was Judge Hooker. And as the years went by, the cast increased. Marjorie married Bronco, played for a time by Richard Crenna, and had twins. Throughout the run, Gildersleeve always seemed to have a complicated love life, dating a bevy of women, but never settling down. The character of Gildersleeve appeared in a number of motion pictures, always played by Hal Perry. In 1950, when Perry left for another network and a promising new radio show, Willard Waterman took over the role and continued as Gildersleeve when the series made a transition to television in 1954. In this 1943 radio episode, Gildersleeve is on vacation at Grass Lake, trying to mend a broken heart. Here's Hal Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. (laughs) The Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Now, before Gildy starts on his rollicking new adventures, I'd like to take just a moment to tell you about a grand adventure in eating. Of course, we're all backing the government's ration program, but now and then we'd all like a little more flavor and variety. Well, let's take bread, rolls, and muffins, for example. They're still just as plentiful, still just as downright good eating as ever, and a whole lot better for you, made with vitamin-enriched flour. But, uh, well, shucks, who wants to eat them dry? So here's where we get to that adventure in mighty good eating. For delicious flavor, spread parquet margarine on bread rolls and muffins and see how really good they taste. You won't know how delicious until you've actually tried parquet. What's more, parquet margarine is one of the best energy foods you can serve. Every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. Yes, parquet is wonderfully good to eat and good for you. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now, 
what about our old friend Gildersleeve? Well, the last we saw of him back in June, he was left at the altar by the widow Ransom. Two months have passed, but the mark of that fateful moment is still upon him. Gildersleeve today is a changed man. For the past week, he's been vacationing at the Idlewild Hotel on the shore of picturesque Grass Lake, where he's come to seek forgetfulness and such solitude as he can find in the company of his niece and nephew. It's the breakfast hour now, and Gildersleeve steps out on the veranda for a breath of morning air before advancing upon the dining room. Ah, uh, sea air. Ah, uh, there's nothing like it. Why, it's Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why, so it is. Oh, good morning, ladies. Miss Foltz, Miss Sowerby, Mrs. Uh, good morning. Oh, you're up early this morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, mistake. Well... <laughs> You know the old saying, early to bed and early to rise. Makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're the first healthy man I've seen in weeks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm just going to be frightfully bold and ask you if you won't share my table with me at breakfast this morning. Why, uh... Now, Miss Foltz, I saw him first. And where do I come in? Mr. Gildersleeve, as good as promised me. Now, ladies, please. Well, I think Mr. Gildersleeve should take us all into breakfast. It's the only way. That's it. We'll all go. Well, I'd be delighted, ladies, but it just so happens... Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, you have nothing to say about it. This is war, you know. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, I can imagine nothing more delightful. Oh, listen to him. Unfortunately, I just remembered that I forgot something. My niece and nephew. It'd hardly do to forget them now, would it? So if you'll excuse me... Oh. I'll be seeing you anon. But you'll be back. Uh, anon, Miss Foltz, anon. Uh, women, women, nothing but women. I came up here to forget women. What do I find? Miss Fultz. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Miss Sowerby. <laughs> uh, I gotta get out of here. Hi, Unc. What cooker? Leroy, get your clothes on. I was just going for a swim. You've just been for a swim. I was going for another. You've gone for your last. Get out of those wet trunks and start dressing. And stop dripping all over the floor. What's up? We going somewhere? We're leaving. Leaving? You heard me. Get dressed. You mean today? Today we're leaving? Today. This morning. Right now. Right after breakfast. I already had breakfast. You don't mind if I have a bite? <laughs> no. Gosh, leaving. I better have breakfast sent in. I'm not going out there with all those harpies. Uh, hand me the telephone. But, Uncle, what about the swimming race tomorrow? It's too bad about the swimming race. Hand me the telephone. Hello? Gosh, after I trained a whole week for it. Hello? Just when I stand a good chance to knock off the junior medal. Uh, hello? Marge is going to be awful disappointed. She was counting on that dance tomorrow night. Uh, what is this? Tomorrow's the big day, you know. Swimming race, canoe tilting, free food. Hello? Dance in the evening, swimming race. Marge will be disappointed. Room service. Hello, operator. She's going to be awful disappointed, Marge is. Operator, anybody. Hello? Uh, I give up. Call this a hotel. Come in. Well, if it isn't Sleeping Beauty. Oh, shut up. Tough luck about that dance you're not going to Saturday night. What are you talking about? I'm talking about we're leaving. That's what, aren't we, Uncle? Oh, Uncle Moore. Not now. I'm sorry, my dear, but I can't stand another day of this. I can't go anywhere. I can't even stick my nose out of this room. But what, I'm surrounded by old hens. Miss Foltz, Miss Sowerby, Mrs. Hooses. Well, you can't blame them, Uncle Maud, if you're so attractive. Mm, well. You are, you know. You're the most attractive man in the hotel. I'm the only man in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and who said this was a hotel? You ring the bell, no bellhop. You pick up the telephone, no operator. Turn on the water, no water. Whatever did we come up here for anyway? To find Marge a fella. Oh, shut up. What are you kicking about? You found one. Listen, Mr. Nosey, if you would just kindly be so good as to kindly mind your own business instead of snooping around. Who was snooping around? I missed the ball and it happened to roll behind the swing. Now, kids. What, what were you doing playing ball? You were supposed to be working on your arithmetic. You haven't done any old so Don't much. try to change the subject. He had his arm around you. Leroy. He did not have his arm around now, you. Now, Marjorie. Well, he was holding your hand. He was not holding my hand. And he wasn't. Who you think it was? Yeah. She admits it. She admits it. I do not. Quiet. You heard her, Unc. She admits it. He hasn't done a bit of work on his arithmetic all summer. Quiet, both of you. God, you've done nothing but wrangle you two from the day we got here. I'm sick of it. We're getting out of here on the first train. Oh, Uncle, oh, Uncle Moore, please. No, it's settled. The first train. Not see what you did. Oh, dear, I never did you a thing. Did I too. did not. What? <laughs> he got... <laughs> Leroy, get some clothes on. Marjorie, you start packing. Where are you going, huh? Never mind. You must know I'm going down to the lake. 
where I hope to have a few quiet moments to myself and, if possible, recover some of my sanity. Oh, oh it's 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 Like having bloodhounds after you. I'll sit here and cool off a little and look at the water. I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea and the sky. Grass Lake. <laughs> oh, well. Oh. Well, what? Who? Huh? Oh, excuse me. I, I didn't realize there was anyone here. Neither did I. I'm awfully sorry. I thought this seemed such a lovely, quiet spot to sit and look at the lake. Yes, and you can... Uh, uh, why don't you take this bench? Oh, I couldn't. You were here first. Well, I'll sit on this log. Oh, but your beautiful white flannel. Huh? Oh, I've had them a long time. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's room for both of us on the bench. Oh? Uh-huh. <laughs> there, you see? Now I haven't disturbed you at all. No. There's a lovely light on the lake at this time of the morning, isn't there? Yes, there is. Would you say it was eerie? What, Lake Erie? <laughs> oh, no. No, the light. It's a strange, eerie light. Oh, yes. Very eerie. <laughs> it's so seldom one meets a person nowadays who really loves nature. But you do, don't you? I guess so. <laughs> uh, you staying here at the hotel? Yes, I just arrived this morning. Are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going home this afternoon. Oh, just as we're starting to get acquainted. Yeah. And ever since then, I've been water commissioner of Summerfield. That's the story of my career. I guess it's not much of a story. Oh, it's a fascinating story. You've had to fight, haven't you? I knew it the moment I saw you. Well, I've had my struggles, but what man hasn't? <laughs> of course. You know, I really think it's a shame you're leaving today. Well, it's not absolutely definite. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, would you mind if I asked you something terribly personal? Uh, uh, uh. No, go ahead. What is it? Well, I don't like to intrude into your... I don't know how to say it even. But I had the feeling while you were telling me about yourself that you were leaving something out. Something that had made you terribly sad. Oh, no. You're mistaken. Am I? Well, tell me honestly. Have you had an unhappy love affair? No. I knew it. Some woman has hurt you. I'm sure because you're so kind and gentle. You must have been wounded deeply once yourself. Well, I... Oh, how you must hate us women, all of us. Well, naturally, I try to be fair, but... <laughs> I'm afraid I'll never again be able to think of a woman as a friend. Well, you must try. Perhaps if you could tell someone about it, someone sympathetic, it might help. It, it often does help, you know. It's very painful. Well, if it would hurt you too much... Oh, no, no, no. Then try. Well, uh, when I first met Leela Ransom... <laughs> oh. When I first met her, the thing that struck me about her was her helplessness. Just a young girl, I suppose. Well, she was more of a widow... <laughs> At least I understood she was a widow And she seemed to need someone Someone to shield her from the world Well, that's what she led me to believe She tricked you I'm sure of it now <laughs> However, I lost my heart to Leela Ransom I loved her deeply, sincerely I asked her to marry me And she consented But the marriage? We were never married Oh I, I stood beside her at the altar The happiest man in the world asking only that I be allowed to devote the rest of my life to her. Suddenly, her husband walked in. <laughs> he was no deader than me. Oh, how dreadful. Yes. You can see why I'm through with women, can't you? Oh, 
I don't blame you for feeling the way you do, honestly. But I do feel there's hope because, well, I was hurt once, too, terribly. Oh, you, you were? Yes. I once thought I could never bear to speak to a man again. Well, that's quite a coincidence. Did he uh, leave you at the altar? Well, it wasn't quite like that. I'll tell you about it sometime. Oh, tell me now. No, I'd rather not, but you're very kind to be so interested. You've done a great deal for me. Oh, no, you've done a great deal for me. Uh, Would you uh, like to walk down this path to the lake for a little way? Oh, I'd love to. It it looks so nice and shady. Yes, it is shady. (laughs) (laughs) You're sure that you uh, won't be nervous walking in the woods with a stranger? Do you think I should be? (laughs) <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's quite steep. Steep, yes. Oh! Uh, oh, what's the matter? Oh, my ankle. I'm afraid I've turned it rather badly. Oh, here, lean on me. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, you seem so... so solid. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you think so? Oh, so safe. I- I'm sure you won't let me go. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, for Pete's sakes, Mom, I've been looking all over for you. Frederick. You better come down to the lake. Jack and Tom are throwing rocks at each other. Well, make them stop. I can't. And one of them hit Mary and her nose is bleeding. Oh. And Nancy lost her bathing suit in the water. Oh, my goodness. Madam, I can see you are not left at the altar. Excuse me, I gotta go and catch a train. <laughs> Oh, operator? No, I do not wish a beverage. I want my bill. I want to check out. Room 618 and 619. Yes, we'll see that he hurries. Tougher to get out of this hotel than to get into a good one. <laughs> well, I guess I've got everything in the bag. If I can only close it. Oh, Anki, before you close it, could you just tuck in one little thing for me? I suppose so. What is it? Just that little Cupid doll I won in the hotel raffle. But Marjorie, that Cupid doll's almost as big as Leroy. <laughs> I haven't got room for that. But your suitcase is bigger than mine. It's not that big. You want the cupie, carry it in your arms. You'd be lucky if they don't make you buy him a ticket. Oh. Gosh, I wish I hadn't won it now. Well, leave it. Let somebody else win it. Uh, where's that man with a bill? Operator, this is 618. If that man isn't here with my bill in one minute, I'm going to sneak out and leave my baggie. That's telling a monk. Yeah. Let's close this thing, Leroy. I'm afraid those hinges are going to... There. Thank goodness. Say, I just remembered something. What? Something you forgot. Wait a second, I'll get it. Yeah, here it is, Uncle. What is it? Here, cat. Oh, Leroy. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, Uncle. I thought you were looking. Well, I wasn't. Anyway, never throw a wet bathing suit at anybody. <laughs> See, where am I going to put this darn thing? Come in. Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, yes. You the bill clerk? Oh, no, sir. I'm the assistant manager. Oh, excuse me. That's all right. The clerk told me you'd ask for a statement, but we can't let you check out, Mr. Gildersleeve. We're counting on you to be master of ceremonies at the ladies' archery contest this afternoon. Uh, Give me my bill. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, the ladies will be so disappointed. I can't help it. Why don't the ladies leave me alone? Well, uh, there's a war on, you know. (laughs) That has nothing to do with it. Get my bill ready and send somebody up here for my bags. All right, if you insist. Uh, Now, what was I doing? Thinking about your wet bathing suit. That could be dry by tomorrow, Unc, and I wouldn't miss the swimming race. Never mind. (laughs) Uh, better wrap it up in a couple of dirty shirts. Makes an awful, awful lump, though. Come in. Well, hello, everybody. Hooker. Hello, Judge. Hi, Judge. What are you doing here, you old goat? Well, if that isn't foolish question number 999, I came to spend the weekend with you. I'm sorry, but you're too late, Judge. I can't stand another day in this place. Oh, now, Gildy, I've come all the way up here to see you. How about 18 holes of golf right now? Uh, golf. That's what I came up here for. And this afternoon, we could go fishing on the lake. Maybe get a couple of smallmouth bass for supper. Oh, smallmouth bass fried in breadcrumbs with a little lemon juice. Yeah. <laughs> We've had chicken here every night this week. Oh, come on, Gildy. Tomorrow we can hire some horses and go for a ride along the mountain trail. Bye, George Horace. I'll stay over with you. Oh, Uncle Mort, you darling. Judge, you're a hero. Well, everybody happy. Operator, this is 618. No, I've already checked out. I want to come back. Yes, till Sunday morning. I don't care who wants the room. I've got it, and I'm going to keep it. All right, go on, Leroy. Go on, Marjorie, with your swimming race. Line up your date for the dance. Hooray! See you later, Hunk. i got to get back in training. i got to solve a manpower problem. Uh, oh, uh, doggone it, Horace. I'm glad you came. 
I've been trying to find a golf game, somebody to fish with ever since I got here. You have, Gildy? Well, you must be slipping. There's plenty of golfers right here under your nose. Well, I couldn't find them. Well, I signed up a couple for a foursome with us this morning, and they're going fishing with us this afternoon. Oh, that's great. Not only that, but tomorrow night they're going to the dance with us. Wait a minute, Hooker. Who are these golfers? Two Lollapaloozas, a Miss Foltz and Miss Sowerby. Oh! <laughs> Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. School days are just around the corner, and that's going to call for some new strategy from you generals of the kitchen. I mean, you mothers will have to think up tempting new ways to put nourishing foods into those school lunch boxes. So allow me to pass along a helpful suggestion. Here's how to get really important food value out of those precious few ration points. It's to buy and serve parquet margarine. But do you know that parquet requires only four red ration points a pound? And every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. In your government's official nutrition program, the daily use of such excellent foods as vitamin-fortified margarine is recommended. As for appetizing flavor, well, parquet really satisfies. You'll find parquet just about tops as a delicious spread for bread. And you may be interested to know that parquet carries the seal of acceptance of the Council on Foods and Nutrition of the American Medical Association. So ask for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now getting back to the great Gildersleeve and his little family, we find them surfeited with vacation joys, glaring at each other and a Judge Hooker from opposite seats in a day coach. Well, according to my calculations, we ought to reach Summerfield about 6 o'clock. According to my calculations, we'll be lucky if we reach it at all on this milk train. Leroy, for goodness sake. Leroy, take your feet off your sister's lap. Well, I have to put them somewhere, don't I? Fine accommodations you got us, Horace. A day coach. I thought you were supposed to have some influence around here. I have. The assistant passenger agent is a personal friend of mine. You don't say. Yes, sir. We used to go to school together. I see him every now and then. Fred Kennicott is his name. Fred Kennicott. Oh. Uh. How is Fred Kennicott these days? Oh, he's fine. That's fine. I wonder if you'd give Fred Kennicott a message for me the next time you see him. Glad to, Gildy. Glad to. What's the message? Tell him his railroad is a public disgrace. (laughs) All very well to complain, Gildy, but let me remind you there's a war on. If anybody else reminds me there's a war on, I'll... Where do you think you're going, Leroy? To get a drink. Ouch! Get off the judge's bunions. I'm sorry, Judge. Now sit down. Gosh, can I even get a drink of water, even? You've had a drink. You've had 50 drinks. You've done nothing but run from here to the water cooler ever since we get on this train. But, Uncle, I'm dying. You heard your uncle. Sit down. You keep out of this, Judge. I'll handle it. (laughs) You were a boy of mine. By golly, I know what I'd do with him. If I need any advice from you on the handling of children, Judge, I'll ask for it. Feel free to do so at any time. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) Oh, hum. What a jolly little journey. Oh, Marjorie's right. We shouldn't be allowing ourselves to get on each other's nerves here. After all, this will all be over in an hour or two. Or three. By six o'clock, we'll all be home. Bertie will be there waiting for you with a fine big dinner. Bertie. Yeah, now you're talking, Judge. Good old Bertie. By George, after all the stale chicken I've had to eat in the past week, I could plow into one of Bertie's dinners and really do it justice. <sighs> so could I. I tell you, Judge, there's not a finer cook in the, wor- the world than our Bertie. Huh? I won't argue with you there, Throckmorton. I still remember the last dinner I had at your house. Though it was some time ago. It's truly an experience, truly an experience. Though, as I say, it was some time ago. Uh, Horace, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to be my guest tonight at dinner. Well, now, let me see. Have I any other engagements? Sunday night? You haven't any engagements, you old goat, and you know it. <laughs> Drock Martin, after consulting my calendar, I'm delighted to find myself in a position to accept your very welcome invitation. Is he kidding? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, kids, we're going home. Bye, George. I don't know why we ever left it. Going home, going home. Yeah, yeah. Never so humble, there's no place like home. Oh, brother. Be it ever Uncle so humble, throw it there's no place like home. 
Well, here we are, kids. Uh, Bertie! Oh, Bertie! Is that you, Mr. Gilfleet? Hello, Bertie. Oh, and Leroy and Marjorie and Judge Hooker. Well, my goodness, I sure am glad to see you. No gladder than we are to see you, Bertie. That's right, Bertie. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm mighty glad to see you, Mr. Gilfleet. Well, our train was a little late. I hope we haven't spoiled the supper. Spoiled it? Yes. Supper? Yes. Gilsleeve ain't no supper to spoil. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't expect it till tomorrow. But I don't understand, Bertie. You just said you were glad to see us. I am, Mr. Gilsey. You arrived in just the nick of time. I was just going to the weekly meeting of my victory lodge, and I'm retroactive in my dues. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a little advance on your salary, Bertie. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry about supper, but there ain't a bite of food in this house. Well, now, if y'all would excuse me, well, I'll Wait just... a minute, Bertie. Don't I smell chocolate cake? Yes, by golly. So do I. Is there chocolate cake in the house, Bertie? <laughs> well, yes, sir, there is. I baked it for the run hit lot of town rally tonight at the lodge. The party that buys the war bonds with a certain number on it, he gets the cake as a bonus. Oh, oh, it's a raffle. Oh, no, sir. Buying a raffle ticket is illegal. But nobody's going to throw you in jail for buying a war bond. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. How about that, Judge? Well, without passing on the constitutional questions involved, I'd like to buy a chance on the cake. Well, y'all can have the cake for yourself if you want it. No, Bertie, you take the cake and chase Hitler out of town with it. <laughs> We'll get along some way. Gee, I'm hungry. Isn't there anything in the icebox, Bertie? Not a thing, Leroy. I'm sorry. Well, never mind, Bertie. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gill, please. Good night, everybody. Good night, night Have a good time. Well, I guess I'll call up Piggy Banks and get invited to his house. You'll do nothing of the kind, young man. Haven't you any pride? Sure I have. I don't have to beg, Piggy. Well, I don't like it. And no hinting now. Are you kidding? He's my pal. Uh, hello, pig face. Oh, pardon me, Mrs. Banks. Uh, <laughs> is Piggy there? That was his mother. Oh, no. Hiya, pig. Yeah, I just got back. Can I come over for supper? Yep, Leroy. <laughs> Ask if I can come too, Leroy. Marjorie. I'm bringing Marge so your sister will leave us alone, Pig. Be right over. Goodbye. Well, I'm ashamed of both of you. Oh, you're not really, Uncle Marge. <laughs> Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye, Marjorie. Goodbye, Leroy. So long. Uh, don't you be up late. The very idea. Oh, I don't think it's so bad, Gildy. You don't? Well, then how about inviting me to dinner? All right. May I have the pleasure of your company at dinner, Throckmorton? I shall be delighted, Horace. Of course, there's no food in my house either. Oh, and the grill at the Summerfield Hotel is closed on Sundays. Where are you taking me, Judge? To Peavy's Drugstore for a chicken sandwich. <laughs> uh, come on. Well, wait, the soda's satisfactory, gentlemen? Oh, I guess they keep the breath of life in us for a while. I'm using a new strawberry flavoring now, a synthetic. What, do they make it out of plastics? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve always has to have his little joke. Uh, nice to see you back, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, how was the vacation? So-so, Peavy, so-so. I suppose it does a man good to get away once in a while. Yes, I've always heard it does. Though I haven't taken a vacation myself in 30 years. Neither has Mrs. Peavy. Yeah. 30 years with one woman? That's a long time. Well, no, I wouldn't... Yes, I will, too. <laughs> <laughs> It's a long time. The last time I took a vacation by myself was back in the summer of 1913. Oh, that the summer you got engaged? No, oh, no. We were engaged for five years before that. <laughs> of course, five years is a long time, too. But then I, I believe in long engagements. So does Mrs. Beebe. Yeah, long engagements, short engagements. As soon as a man lets a woman get a hold on him, his life is over. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Speak for yourself, <laughs> Gildy. That's just who I'm speaking for. Gentlemen, from now on, I'm a free agent. Marriage may be all right for some people, but not for yours truly. Because, frankly, I'm just not interested. Our friend here sounds a little bitter. There wouldn't be a touch of sour grapes in that now, would there, Gildy? None at all. You're referring to Leela Ransom? Forget her, because I have. Uh, speaking of Mrs. Ransom... I haven't I... given her a thought from that day to this. Uh, speaking of Mrs. Ransom... If she were to walk right in here now, it would mean nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. Well, I hear she may be coming back to Summerfield. No, sir. If I... Where'd you hear that? You uh, read the paper, didn't you? I haven't seen a paper in a week. Well, then you didn't hear about her husband. Beauregard? What about it? As if I cared. Sad. Very sad. Well, I suppose we all have to go sooner or later. What do you mean? Here today and gone tomorrow. Yeah. 
Peavy, what are you talking about? It's something we all have to face. We can only hope that when the time comes, we'll be ready. <laughs> Peavy, will you stop mumbling and tell me what happened? Yeah, for the love of Mike, Peavy. It was in the paper yesterday. Beauregard Ransom passed on as the result of an accident one week ago today. Oh, that poor little girl. Now she's going to need an understanding friend. <laughs> Dear Diary, got back from my vacation today. Total expenses, $110.18. I'll have to watch it a little during September. <laughs> Was interested to hear from PB today that L.R. may be returning to Summerfield. Well, I should happen to run into her on the street. I know exactly how I'll behave. I'll be polite, naturally, but nothing more. She thinks she can take up with me just where we left off two months ago. She's sadly mistaken. I'll show her that I'm not to be tossed aside lightly like an old glove. Yeah. It'll be, how do you do, Mrs. Ransom, instead of, hello, Leela. Leela. Oh, diary, am I going to make a jackass of myself all over again? <laughs> Good night. Music heard on this program was under the direction of Claude Sweeten. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, inviting you to listen again next Sunday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Homemakers, I want to tell you about something that's a point saver, a time saver, and a money saver all in one. It's Kraft Dinner, the product that gives you swell macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes cooking time. A package of Kraft Dinner serves four people at a cost of only a few cents a serving. And you get three packages. That's three separate family main dishes for only one single red ration point. Does all this sound too good to be true? Well, try Kraft Dinner. See how the special Kraft Dinner macaroni cooks fluffy tender just in boiling water. See how the Kraft grated lets you whisk cheese flavor through and through the macaroni in a jiffy. Then listen to the folks compliment you on that speedy, delicious macaroni and cheese. If you like, you can mold your hot craft dinner into a ring or timble and serve with cream vegetables, fish, chicken, or what have you. Try it soon. Spend one single red ration point for three packages of craft dinner. The program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. And that's The Great Gildersleeve starring Hal Perry as originally broadcast August 29, 1943, sponsored by Kraft Foods, as heard on NBC. Next time on the Film Detective Podcast, Joel McRae stars as Ranger Jace Pearson on Tales of the Texas Rangers from 1952. To learn more about this series, visit thefilmdetective.com. See you next time. <laughs>